Recently, there's been a lot of news about gas stoves. Federal officials may be considering a ban on gas stoves. In an interview with Bloomberg, a commissioner with a government agency called gas stoves a hidden hazard. And to be honest, I was initially a little skeptical about the panic over gas cooking. So I read through dozens of studies, interviewed a few experts, and put indoor air quality monitors throughout my home. And what I discovered was pretty alarming. So for the second one, uh, uh, the monthly one, is, is that your daily average? Yeah, that is. Oh boy. Before getting into the data, it's helpful to understand what makes gas stoves so bad for our health in the first place. Cooking on any stove produces a range of indoor air pollutants, but gas stoves are unique in that they produce nitrogen dioxide, or NO2. At high enough levels, NO2 exposure can cause respiratory illnesses like asthma. So for two months, I monitored the NO2 levels in our home as we cooked. Every time I turned on our stove or oven, I'd watch our NO2 pollution spike. Now, I'm not an expert on indoor air pollution, so I reached out to Josiah Keppert, who studies this stuff for a living at Drexel University. Josiah's run thousands of tests on indoor air quality, so I asked him for some help making sense of my data. He told me that there's two important metrics to watch. The first one is hourly NO2 concentration levels. The WHO hourly guideline is around 106 parts per billion. But what you can see here is around 650, this enormous spike. Um, up to almost 300, um, about three times the hourly guideline. As bad as my hourly data look, Josiah told me that in many of the other studies he's run, he's seen these NO2 levels stay high for hours. When I've done measurements in my own home or in other people's homes, you would see this huge spike go up and then it stays that high or even goes higher and higher over time. The second set of data that we looked at was my daily average NO2 levels over the course of a month. So this chart is it's pretty alarming. Um, the WHO last year, they reduced their annual guideline from around 21 parts per billion to around five parts per billion. So that's a 75% reduction in this annual guideline. And so you can see here that, I mean, almost every single day here is about 10 times higher than the WHO guideline. Now, at this point, I know what you might be thinking. This is just one data point but dozens of studies have shown that homes with gas stoves have consistently high levels of NO2, and that creates a lot of health risks. In 2013, researchers analyzed data from tens of thousands of homes, and they found that children living in a home with a gas stove have a 42% higher chance of developing asthma. Just a few months ago, researchers found that 12.7% of childhood asthma cases can be attributed to a gas stove. I recently interviewed Brady Seals, one of the authors of that paper, and she told me this. When we look at other population attributable fractions, that's really similar to children's risk of, of asthma from exposure to secondhand smoke. So I think most of us know that secondhand smoke exposure is not great, but how many of us know that gas cooking could have a similar risk? All of this is getting a little heavy, so I want to take a break to hear from one of our sponsors, the natural gas industry. Cooking with gas. gas. Cooking with gas. gas. We all cook better when we're cooking with gas. gas. Gas is so hot it's not on when it's off. It's the only way to cook. That's what I was taught. All right, thanks gas industry. Now back to some of the research. So according to climate scientists, gas stoves aren't just bad for our health. They're also warming up our planet. Natural gas is a fossil fuel, and when it's burned, carbon dioxide is released into the atmosphere. But natural gas is mostly methane, which is an especially potent greenhouse gas. Once it gets into the atmosphere, methane warms the planet about 25 to 80 times faster than carbon dioxide. Recently, a group of researchers at Stanford looked at how much methane was leaking from people's stoves. They found that even when stoves are off, they leak this super pollutant. And that methane is heating up the planet as much as the pollution from 600,000 gas-powered cars. For all of these reasons, the experts that I spoke to for this video think that we should eventually phase out gas stoves. A few cities and states have already passed laws that would help do this. Today, the city council voted to ban natural gas from all new construction and require electrical instead. New York City, California, and Washington have all passed policies that would prevent builders from putting gas stoves in new homes. When some people hear about these laws, they think the only alternative to gas cooking is the electric coil stoves in their grandma's house. But electric stove technology has come a long way in recent years. Induction stoves, for example, use advanced technology to offer a super precise and efficient cooking experience. Many chefs like John Kung and Eric Repair actually prefer induction for this reason. As I mentioned, I was a bit skeptical of the panic over gas cooking when I began this research. 
Like many people, I liked cooking on gas, but then I ran my experiment and talked to experts like Josiah and Brady, and it became clear, gas stoves are bad for both our health and the planet. 